Welcome on in to the weekly spotlight presented by Kumo Tire. I am not Gianna. I am not Dom. I am not Jeff. I am Dan McLoon, one of the behind the scenes pe people on the weekly G side. And I am here today because we have so many people that are moving all over the place with the NBA G League playoffs going on. And one of those people is, uh, is our guest today, Patrick Matumbo, the head coach of Raptors 905. We are super appreciative for you coming on to join us. Thank you and welcome to the show, Patrick. Hi, Dan. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Well, hey, I, I'm going to start off with a simple one here. You guys had a great regular season. The top team in the Eastern Conference, 24 and 8, earned that first round bye and the ability to kind of wait through that first round that happened last night where you'll play against the Capital City Go Go, uh, 7 30 p.m. on NBA TV. That'll be tomorrow, Thursday. What's the ad, uh, what's the atmosphere like in the locker room for these guys? What's everyone's excitement level as you're gearing up for another playoff run? Well, it's, you know, there's there's a mixture of uh, excitement and, and anticipation, and you as as you would imagine, uh, just you know, sitting and and uh, from not knowing who you are going to play to knowing who you're going to play and prepare to, uh, prepare for them. I think everybody is, is is ready to to get on with it and start playing. And this one's not playoff related, but I have to get it in off the bat here because you have said it so many times over the years in interviews that your last name, you are not related to Kemi Matumbo, but years later, on a scale of one to 10, one being never, 10 being, oh my gosh, Dan, every single day. How often do you still get that question whenever you introduce yourself to people for the first time? I don't get it as often uh, now. I think it, people start to realize that this is a, a, a different, different Matumbo. It's, it's funny though. Because I get asked that question still quite, quite a bit when I travel. Certainly, certainly. And on your end, though, back to this current team, uh, your Raptors 905 team, the best defensive team in the league this year. It's been a consistent theme for this team since you've been the head coach. Gary Payton was the defensive player of the year in the G League last year. You guys have always been near the top of the defensive standings, and there's been a strong correlation with teams that have finished atop the defensive metrics in the G League and the ability to go deep into the playoffs and win into the finals. How much of an emphasis is that on your coaching staff as a whole and the way that you kind of try and make pieces work for a roster that features a lot of moving pieces in and out with assignments and call-ups and things of that nature? Well, then that's a good question. Uh, uh, it's, it's very important because because we, we, we believe you are what you emphasize daily. Uh, and, 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 and that's a big, big part of, of our program here, what, what we believe in, uh, starting from our practices, uh, and just, just our approach with, with everything. It's, it's a huge, huge component because we understand that unless you defend, you're not, you may win for a little bit, but you're not going to win big. And, and that's our ambition and, and culturally, it's just something that we really like to hang our, our, hat, on, our hat on. In that vein as well, another thing that's interesting from the G League side that's not present in all of these other places is that you have these call-ups and you have players coming in on assignment, two-way guys, and that's been a big thing for Raptors 905 this season. Uh, you guys have had a lot of those players called up and sent back down that you've been rotating in and out. Um, obviously, you have that core cast that's been there throughout the whole season, but with Reggie Perry, who's been such a big piece for you guys so far, not available until maybe the Eastern Conference Finals. We'll see whether we whether the Raptors have Delano Banton, Justin Champagny, some of those other two-way guys. Uh, how has that kind of been an extra challenge from a coaching staff perspective that you need to negotiate and work around in terms of daily lineups, daily rosters, you know, working practice to make sure that you guys keep winning. You know, the way I look at it, Dan, it's, it's, it's the nature of the beast. It's the nature of the beast. It's, it's, it's this, this position, you, you have to anticipate those things will happen. This is a, a league that's geared toward developing people. And then the circumstances from COVID to call-ups to assignments to it's just something that you have to juggle and, and, and I think actually it's, it's it's pretty good it's very challenging uh, but we're not the only only ones facing this but also it helps all of us in terms of becoming more agile coaches who are able to make changes in a heartbeat and just uh, uh, and forces us to have to start to have a system where people can slide in and out uh, easily, easily because 
sometimes you, you, you don't have time. You don't have two, three uh, days to, to get somebody acclimated to what you do and, and, and equip them to go and, and be on the court and perform the way they're supposed to. So uh, the credit goes to our coaches to be quite, to be honest with you, because they do the work behind the scenes and do the extra work to bring guys along and, and, and also to our players where anytime somebody got called up or somebody got COVID or somebody got hurt, uh, we seldom do we spend much time uh, lamenting about those things. For us, it's, I'm sorry, it kind of sounds cliche, but next man up, you know, it's, it's an opportunity for somebody else to, to, uh, to, to, to step up and, 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 and play the part. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's not cliche if it's true. So I can't blame you at all there. So uh, in that vein, too, you've had an extensive coaching background, coaching at multiple different levels, not just the G League. Obviously, you were also part of that Toronto Raptors staff um, as an assistant coach that won a title um, in the uh, Nick Nurse uh, head coach team, uh, the Kawhi Leonard year in Toronto. When you look at the way that the playoffs are run comparatively in the NBA and the G League, what do you kind of see as the coaching differences in the way that you have to approach each of these different playoff matchups where a best of seven series, probably a different approach in how your game planning is compared to these one game playoffs in the G Leagues? Well, then it's game seven every round, <laughs> right? It's game seven every round, so you got to be prepared to the uh, the the my bads is my fault or next game or that that's gonna send you home so it's good it's good you know, I love it I love it because it it brings a certain level of of uh, you gotta be ready to go you gotta be ready to go you gotta be crisp in your execution uh, uh, the margin of error is very thin and you don't get to wait the next game and and make the adjustment unless you get to the finals uh, and I pray we do. Uh, but if not, I mean, these young men, it's, it's so, so every possession counts, every, every, uh, every quarter is important. And, and it just, it just puts such an emphasis on, on preparation and execution from the start because tomorrow's not promised. Couldn't have said it better myself there. Yeah. And expanding on that too, you coached under Nick Nurse. Um, in the Toronto Raptors organization. And obviously he's the picturesque success story from a G League coaching side of somebody who was able to successfully make that transition and become super successful at the NBA level. What's your relationship like with him and how has he kind of helped guide you in, in these situations and uh, getting you in a position where you feel the most comfortable and uh, confident in leading this team on the G League side of things? Our coach has been great to me. Uh, coach has been great to me from, from uh, I mean, he watches our games and, and we'll exchange when, when he's, he's very busy, as you know, with, with, with his team, but he takes the time to, to give feedback, encourage, uh, very supportive. And he's a guy who's done it, who's done it, has been successful at this level and been successful at the NBA level and, and working for him, anybody that works for, for, for a coach like that, for, uh, just by paying attention, you're already getting better. And on top of it, he's a giver. You know, he wants he wants his assistants to do well. Uh, he he you know he he doesn't miss teachable moments. You know, for all of us, and and it's just it's just such a privilege, honestly. Uh, I mean this sincerely to 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 have worked with them and to be under that umbrella for sure. Certainly. And he's been successful at all levels, uh, uh, G League and NBA side. So great person to Absolutely. glean any sort of information from there. Um, and from your personal playing career as well, you had a lot of different stops internationally, Italy, Greece, and you ended your career with the Bakersfield Jam in the, was the then the D League, then still at that point. But from your time in the G League at the end of your career playing and your time uh, in the G League as a coach, how have you kind of seen the growth of the league compared to the other leagues you played in and the other leagues you coached in from where it was in your season with Bakersfield to where we are right now in the 2021-2022 season? Players are making more, I believe, a lot more, <laughs> I believe now, right? And there's uh, far more, I think, I think now there's what, 29, 29, uh, 29 teams and, and, and the, the league has grown. 
but it's still pretty competitive. A lot of hungry players that are trying to get to, uh, to develop their games or to transition into their next opportunity. So this league has been, uh, has been and continued to be a great tool for, for guys that are pursuing uh, their dream and their goals. And then the last question I have for you as you head into uh, this round tomorrow night, uh, Capital City Go-Go, 7.30 p.m. on NBA TV. Uh, these winner-take-all scenarios, you said it's treat every game like it's a game seven, but against this team in Capital City that you played twice in the regular season, two close games, but I believe they came out on top in both of them. What's kind of the final approach as you kind of get your team ready uh, for that last push after uh, another great season last year, but another one where you came up a little short on the title front here? Well, it comes down to, you know, uh, at this time of the season, I say you, you are who you are. Your habits will carry you. And it's about, I think we have, we have good, strong habits that produce winning. And we just got to stay in character and we'll be fine. Perfect. Well, hey, that's everything that we had for you today. I appreciate so much you taking the time to speak with us, Patrick. I know it's a very busy time of the year for uh, everyone within the G League uh, realm that's participating in the playoffs. So thank you. Best of luck to you and the team tomorrow night. Again, tune in 7.30 p.m. Eastern time on NBA TV. That's Raptors 905 hosting the fourth seeded Capital City Go-Go. You've been watching the weekly G presented by Kumo Tire. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, Dan. Thanks. Comment, like, and subscribe at NVAG League on YouTube for more.